Hello, everyone. This is Kerwin, and welcome to another episode of Travel Talk. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about should you buy a ticket from the airline directly or should you buy from a travel agent? Let's go. So, a uh, friend of I saw online where a friend of mine was talking about um she had bought two airline tickets. She's a plus size, so she bought two airline tickets and she bought them from a travel agent. And she got to the airport and they were canceled. But no one notified her that they were canceled. So now the airline is trying to uh help her uh with, you know, try to get her on her way. But they only have one seat because the flight is oversold or the flight is fully booked and they can't guarantee that the seat next to her will be empty. Um, and so it get crazy. But that got me thinking that and, and I think what probably happened in their situation, the because the airline was saying that the travel agents didn't book the tickets properly. And so they might have had a dupe booking and the systems would cancel dupe bookings. Because uh, you're not allowed to have two seats with the same name. There's a special way you have to book uh, uh, a second seat on a flight. And they probably didn't do it properly, so it got canceled. Uh, and that has me thinking about my experience I had booking with a travel agent. Now, let just so you know, I am a, actually a travel agent or a travel advisor. <laughs> so if you ever want to book trips with me, let me know because I can book them for you. But what am I what am I about to tell you is this is just the reality of booking with a travel agent. The rule, uh, well, not a rule, but what happens is when you go online to an online travel agent and say you make a booking, that booking does get back to the airline because you're taking seats out of that particular flight for you. However, the price that you pay is they have something called ball pricing. It might be a specific price. Or you might actually pay the same price as somebody else would pay if they went to the airline's website. But what? But the issue is, once the ticket is issued by a travel advisor, travel agent, or a travel agency, the airline cannot touch the ticket. When I say they cannot touch the ticket, uh, you know, it's virtual, right? So of course they can't touch it. But let's say you want you wanted to make a change. So you wanted to go on the fifteenth. Now something comes up and you have to go on the 16th or the 14th or whatever it is. The airline cannot change a ticket because they don't have access to the pricing. They don't have access to everything it will take to change that ticket. When you change a ticket, the system says, hey, here's what you have. Here's what you want to change it to. The price of what you have is this. The price of what you want to change it to is that. So uh, let's work it out. And then it come back and it says, we find out, you know, the two pricing, subtract them from each other. And then you either pay more or you get a refund or you get a credit. That can be done in the airline system quite easily. It can also be done in a travel agent system as well. But if I bought the ticket from the travel agency, that transaction cannot happen in the airline system because they're two separate systems. And the airlines have what's called, or the agencies have what's called consolidated fares, which is the airline will say, take this block of tickets and you sell this block of tickets for whatever you see fit. As long as I make X number of dollars, you can sell them for whatever you want. And so, uh, um, that's kind of how it works. This this happens a lot on like vacation destinations, uh, and you you'll you'll see it. You you don't see because all you see is just a fare, and you go and you buy the fare. Uh, so okay. So when what this means is, when you have a chain, the chain must be done by the airline, by the um whoever whoever you bought your ticket from is the one who has to make the change. If there's a cancellation uh, on the airline side, then you still have to go to your travel agent or your air travel agency to handle that cancellation. Typically though, on day of flight, 
let's say the airline canceled the flight on the day of flight. Usually what they'll do, their computer system will go through and automatically rebook everyone on the next flight or the next available flight. Sometimes the next available flight is not until a few days down the road. Now, depending on the airline, you may come back and you say, okay, I want to go. The airline says, here's the flight we booked you on. You're like, I don't like that flight. Sometimes they can go and change it. Oh, and not that you don't like it, but it doesn't work. Uh, and sometimes the airlines can go and change it. But if they have to give you a refund, the refunds are handled through the travel agency, depending on the airline, again, and depending on which part of the world you are. Uh, so that's those are some of the things that you need to be aware of whenever you buy the ticket, not directly with the airline, um, but with a, a travel agency. Uh, things like, um, and I've had this several times, because sometimes you see some really, really good fares and you go, oh, wow. And you, you go to book it on the airline's website and you can't find that fare. Unsolidated fare. It's a special fare from the agency. I'll give you a classic example. I bought a ticket on Saudi and I can name names. <laughs> I bought it on Priceline and uh, I was flying on Saudi from New York JFK via Jeddah to um, Dubai. And then on the way back, I was gonna do Dubai, Medina, Rehad, JFK. Um, the, the system allowed me to buy that ticket, but I shouldn't have been allowed to buy that ticket. You'll find out why in, in a little bit. First leg, Fine, no issues. Beautiful flight on both Saudi, uh, both legs. JFK, Jeddah, Jeddah, um, Dubai, on uh, both on Saudi. Coming back, I was really excited because I was going to fly in Saudi's 787. Well, didn't quite happen that way. I get to the airport and I check in. And the lady goes, where's your visa? Now, I didn't need a visa on the way in because I was transiting. And uh, she said, well, where's your visa? I go... Didn't think I needed one. She goes, yes, you do. Because you're stopping in Medina. And when you stop in Medina, you actually arrive at the international part of Medina. So you have to enter the country. Then you have to go over to the domestic side of the airport in Medina. And then you got to take a, a domestic flight now from there to Rehad. And then you go on your international flight from Rehad to JFK. And because of that itinerary, you need a visa. Now, the system didn't tell me I need a visa or anything like that. Uh, and it should have, because I did some research and spoke to some people who knew how the back end worked, and they should not have sold that ticket. So I'm in Dubai now, and I get taken. <laughs> the the, the, the check-in agent sends me to the back room. And I get in and there's these two guys and they're sitting behind this desk and they have their hands folded like that. And um, I said, you know, you walk in the room and you're like, oh God, this is not going to end well. Zero compassion from these two gentlemen. So I walk in and they were like, um, what seems to be the problem? And I explained to them and they're like, well, you have to buy a new ticket. I said, well, okay, fine. But can you just put me on, since I can't go through Medina, uh, can you just put me on the nonstop flight that's going to take, that's leaving in like, I think an hour, hour and a half to go from Dubai to Rehad and then Rehad JFK, right? No, they can't do it. And they blamed it on the fact that the ticket was issued by the travel agent, so they couldn't make any changes. Um, and I was like, come on guys, uh, it, it's, it was, it's clearly an error, but it's not an error made by the airlines so that they don't really care. Uh, so then I said, okay, let me get on the phone, picked up the phone, called Priceline. Oh, we can't change it. I go, but it's your error. We can't do anything about it. And I go, okay. Um, so what am I supposed to do? 
silence on the other side of the line. So I go, all right. Came back to the guys and because I'm still in their office. And I said, look, here's what the agency is saying. Can you guys help me to at least get on that flight um, so I can get out of here? No, they cannot. We cannot touch the ticket. I go, okay. So then I realized I wasn't getting anywhere with them, wasn't getting anywhere at Priceline. And so I left the office, left the airport, booked the hotel for the night and rebooked myself on Gulf Air over um, uh, Bahrain. So I did, I did Dubai, Bahrain, Bahrain, London, London to JFK. And this was on Gulf Air uh, on the, the, the two first leg to via Bahrain and London. And then I did American underwear, but it's all one ticket I bought because Gulf Air at the time had some kind of arrangement with American. And so I would get the points and all that. So I booked that. I forget how much it costs. It might've been, I don't know, but it was a one-way ticket. So luckily I was able to do that. And so now I get back to the US and I, you know, of course I wrote back to Priceline. I said, hey, this is what happened. I want my money back. I said, uh, all I, I said, I don't even want an extra. All I want you to do is to pay me for the, um, the hotel I stayed. You don't even have to pay for a meal. Just pay me for the hotel I stayed and pay me for the ticket I, I had to use to get home. Uh, they initially said no. And what I'd done, I'd found out who was the president of the price line or the CEO, and I copied like four or five senior executives on it. The reply I got back didn't have any of those people on it anymore. It had some other person. And um, they said no. So I replied back, reiterated my claim, and said, I would like you to reimburse me with this here. Exactly the same thing I wrote before. I got a phone call <laughs> from a guy who now said, um, we will give you your money back but we're not going to admit that we made a mistake. And I realized I wasn't getting any further with them. And so I got I got my money back in a form of a check or something like that a few days, a few days later. Um, but I tell you the story. So it's very, when you buy these tickets online from the online agencies, um, they, they're always going to take your money immediately, right? But you don't understand what you're buying. And so because you don't understand what you're buying, when you have a problem, you call the airline and the airline says you need to call the travel agency. And now you're mad, right? You're mad because the airline is giving you a hard time because they have no control over the ticket. They cannot make any changes. They cannot do anything with it. You have to go back to the person that you bought it from. So if you can get the same fare as you can uh, with the airline or with a travel agent, just buy it with the airline, because if something happens on the day off, the airlines can make a change easily um, or much easier for you. I had this happen two times already where my flight got shifted a day and realizing that this day doesn't help me because this day means that I'm going to arrive where I'm going the day after I'm supposed to be there, which won't work at all. I might as well not go. And so, but I bought it to the airline. And when they, I called them back and I said, I need to go on a different flight. And they go, well, can you leave in three hours? I go, yes, I can. And so they rebooked me on a later flight that I would still get there um, in time for whatever I needed to do. So um, not bad mouth in travel agencies or anything like that, but you need to know what you're getting into when you buy something from somebody other than the airline, even if the fare is cheaper. And that was the reason why I bought it. Because <laughs> the fare was cheap and I was saving so much money. Um, but in the end, it ended up hurting me. And if I didn't have any other way of getting out of Dubai, you know, I'd still be there. No, I wouldn't still be there, but you know what I mean. Um, and so you have to be, and this is why you always have to make sure when you travel, so you have emergency funds. Always have emergency funds because things are going to happen, right? Um, so I hope this helps. 
you to understand how the system works. Because what happened is that if you do not understand how the system works, you're going to sit there and argue with the agent. The agent at the airport can't do anything. They physically cannot do anything. If you have a ticket and something is wrong with the ticket, it's like sometimes they try to pull the ticket up and it doesn't come up. And you're like, but I bought the ticket five months ago. It doesn't matter. They can't pull it up. So you have to call the agency and I may hope the agency is open when you call them. And that's the thing too, that some of them say they have 24 hour service. They don't. And I found that with it, with because I waited for a long time to get through my call because it was like, what, I think it was eight o'clock in the morning or something like that, which was um, probably late at night. But now I guess a lot of them is because they have, um, they hired Filipinos from the Philippines to answer the phone calls so they can get 24 hour, 24 hour service. Um, and, and that's the thing too, when you ask for a supervisor, um, they're always like, well, none's available. Well, what do you mean none's available? Or, you know, or you have to wait. So you do have to think about all that when you buy uh, a ticket. The other thing too is that when you buy from smaller airlines, um, they may not have reservations people available at different times. Even the larger airlines sometimes don't have 24 hour service. The one thing too is that whenever you get your reservation from an agent, make sure you put your contact number and your email address in the reservation. So you go to the airline website, pull up the reservation because you can add contact information. You just can't make any changes on the airline website. Um, if you try it, it'll tell you no. You can also get your seat assignments. That's stuff you can do. You can also request a wheelchair or any other kind of special services, but you just can't make any changes to the ticket. Uh, you can't even cancel it. You have to call the, the travel agent to do the cancellation, I believe. Um, but put your phone number in there, put your email address in there. This way you will get the notifications. You can check in on, on the online on the app. You can do all that kind of stuff. You just cannot make any changes to the ticket without contacting the person who issued the ticket for you. So this is Kerwin with <laughs> Travel Talk. I hope this helps. And so uh, next time, you know, if you have any issues um, with a uh, uh, ticket bought from an online travel agency, you will know how to um, how to fix it. This is Kerwin. Have a great day, and just know what you are buying. That is the purpose of this message. Talk to you soon. Have a great flight.